All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about wilderness survival essentials. Now, I don't think too much has changed from my previous videos, and that's honestly a lot of the reason why it's also a lot of the reason why I don't tend to do too much with wilderness survival videos as a whole, because a lot of it doesn't really change. However, today I thought it would be fun to do an update. Now that I'm kind of getting back more into wilderness survival tools and just overall wilderness survival as a whole. So today I thought I would talk about my survival essentials, at least for me and what I think. So the first thing on this list that is not actually on this table because it takes up a lot of space is some form of cooking pots, bot, or bottle. And this, like I said, has multiple capacities. In the past, I've really just been a stickler for the Vargo Titanium Bot, and I still think that is an excellent choice. They are spendy, but it is really something that's like a buy once, cry once kind of thing. I've had my Vargo for, I wanna say, six to seven years now, and it never has failed me. It's just an overall great system, great setup, and the Vargo Bot rocks. However, there are so many other great systems out there something like the Boy Scouts of America with their um, mess kit that's long since discontinued but there are plenty on eBay. Um, other ones that are great choices are things like the stainless steel Nalgene's. Um, there are plenty of off awesome offerings uh, out there that really exist and that's probably one of the best parts about survival and bushcrafting as a whole is the sheer amount of wilderness and camp cooking gear out there that exists. It is so easy to find something that meets and fits your needs nigh on perfect. Once again for me it's largely the Vargo Titanium Bot but there are different things for different tastes and different styles as a whole. <clears throat> so with that out of the way, let's talk about some of the other essentials for me. So the first one up, and much of the chagrin of most people, is going to be a really solid uh, survival knife. And for me, this is something that my primary go-to has been for years, the CRK or Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. And these guys are hard to get, and a lot of people give me smack for you know having something like this. But for me, it's just what I feel most comfortable with. I think a lot of people have a very hard time accepting that the best survival knife you can own is not only a survival knife that you have on you, but also the survival knife that you have the most practice with. And so similar to shooting, a lot of people get very stuck up about, you know, what brands, what guns, what ammo, what caliber you should, you know, be using for firearms. But really all that it comes down to is how much do you practice? Because if you don't practice with it, whether it's a survival knife or a survival gun, you're not going to be effective with it. So for me, you know, some people may look at this you know CRK Pacific and be like no that's a combat knife you know that's not a real survival knife and for me I sit here and I say that you know for me I have so much experience and practice with the CRK Pacific that that is usually my go-to for wilderness survival and just being out in the wild because it works for me so effectively <clears throat> all right Next to that, if I had to pick the next tool, I would say probably it's a very close tie between either my GBA Wildlife Hatchet or my Silky Gomboy. Both of these are incredibly capable. I would say my number two, if I'm going to have a knife, for sure. If I don't have a knife, then it's going to be the GBA Wildlife Hatchet because that bridges the gap the best. But if I do have a knife, if I know I'm going to have like a solid survival knife, then I would say the Silky Gomboy has to be next. Silky Gomboy is probably one of my favorites. This one, I'm trying to remember what is the size on this one. This is a 210, that's right. So a 210 is the largest Gomboy you can get. And what I love about the Gomboy 210 is the fact that this is, once again, the largest thing you can get, but you can still throw this in a pocket. You can still throw this in a cargo pouch and it buries pretty darn well. In addition to that too, mine is also the curved, as you guys could probably already tell. I like the curved just because I feel like it gives you some added color power, but so long as you get a Silky Gomboy 210, it is probably the best survival saw out there. This thing rips through wood so very quick, and it is also, like I said, one of the largest um, folding saws that you can reasonably carry that still fits in most pockets, most, you know, like pouches and stuff like that. So it is really quite, it holds its own quite well, and I really do like it for that reason. In addition to much to people's 
dismay. In my opinion, and from what I found, these uh, old, newer silkies tend to be pretty well built. I have not had any tips or blades broken, and I have bent the heck out of this blade. In fact, so much so that it has a bit of a permanent bend in it, but that's beside the point. So, Silky Gone Boy 210 Curved is the next one. Now, onto the next tool. The next one for me would be a hatchet. If it's, once again, if I'm rolling with a knife and a saw, then a hatchet is going to be the next tool. The reason why is the hatchet is essentially the multi-tool of the wilderness. This thing allows you to essentially do so many different tasks so well, and the hatchet just overall works. So for me, I prefer the, the GBA Wildlife Hatchet, and this is for a few reasons. I think that this is a really good combo. It's about a 13 inch handle with about a pound head or you know about a pound of steel there with a very nice very long bevel and one thing you will have to note about the wildlife hatchet is that longer bevel does mean that it, the blade can be a little bit more chippy as you guys can see here there's a nice little nick there but at the same time too it doesn't really hinder the performance if you get you know slight imperfections in the blade so it's not a huge huge deal what i love is that once again very not so much pocket friendly but very very belt friendly and so that's what I love about the wildlife hatchet it's a very easy package very easy package to carry whether you're throwing in a pack or whether you're carrying it on a belt so once again one of my favorite hatchets of all time but there are other hatchets out there that do a good job all right next one up and finishing out the tools specifically is going to be a some form of multi-tool. I prefer the Leatherman Surge. Of course, we will see now that the Leatherman Arc is out, but I do really like and have quite a fancying for the Leatherman Surge. I find that the Surge just works very well. It is still one of Leatherman's largest multi-tools, not only physically, like this is a physically large multi-tool, but also it has the most tools on it. So the most use, the most functionality, and it really does have a lot of ability un hidden under its sleeve. So, this guy is a really rock solid choice. Of course, just about everyone and just about every time these are brought up. Of course, the blade exchange system here is featured and it still exists. It's still great. And one of the cool things is because this uses a T-shank um, or is a T-shank adapter, you can always put longer saw bits on this, really stepping up the versatility of the surge. In addition, you can also take um, this uh, multi-tool has a few flat heads to it and so you can take and a lot of others have taken this larger um, flat head and shaved it down to make it a chisel so that means that ultimately you're just increasing the functionality of the tool and making a better tool overall so the surge has to be one of my favorite tools of all time uh, for multi-tools at least and it just works it continually impresses me and just about anyone else that handles them they are heavy they are big but they are effective so <clears throat> take it for what it's worth all right finishing it up and going into the final uh, countdown so to speak. So this right here is actually not quite the essential. This is my personal survival kit that is all covered in mud because once again people love to say I never go outside, never use my stuff. I don't tend to film a lot of my adventures anymore primarily because I just don't get a lot of views on my different adventure videos and two at the same time they're an absolute pain in the butt to you know do an adventure to hike up to some mountain or peak and to record it all and bring all the camera equipment and stuff like that. So oftentimes I will forego that to just do the adventures myself. So anyways, um, this is dirty. The PSK is dirty itself. But what I'm really interested in talking about here is the personal locator beacon. I've done separate videos. I've really tried to hammer in the point and it's still very similar to batoning. It absolutely mesmerizes me the amount of people that sit there and they're like, oh no, I would never carry a personal locator beacon. That's just like cheating. And for me, it's like one of the most, once again, it's a survival essential. That's why it's on this list is I believe that um, 
I believe that it is truthfully a survival essential. And so for me, a lot of people sit there and they think, oh, you know, I don't really need something like that. And it's like, you don't think you need something like this until you actually do need something like this. And so for me, I think a lot of it goes back to the fact that personal locator beacons are invaluable. They're reasonably easy to carry, whether you decide to carry a spot, a Garmin inReach, a um, ACR like I have right here, Rescue Link ACR, um, they are all fantastic. And usually, you know, you want to continually, you know, keep them in service and make sure that they work. But so long as they're in good working order, you know, all of them serve the same function and as to serve, send a distress signal with high accuracy to search and rescue frequencies to send an alert. And so for me, this is something that is so intuitive and the fact that we have the technology and so many people deny the use of this technology just absolutely puzzles my mind. Like it blows my mind that people knowingly reject one of the best survival tools out there because in my opinion, you know, all the tools we just talked about, all the gear here, you know, there's a lot of, you can put a lot of this stuff to good use, but once again, the end objective for survival and people try to get this all muddied and confused, but the end objective of survival is to get out. Like the moment you realize you're in a survival situation, your whole motto and your whole like, uh, it just your whole motto and your whole reasoning for you know staying alive and surviving is really to affect your evacuation. And so something like a PLB is essentially a cheat code or shortcut or fail safe to that because it gives first responders, search and rescue, a pinpoint location to where you are and they can go from there. So it absolutely blows my mind why you wouldn't want a PLB. It just doesn't make any sense. There's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't want one. And once again, we have the, the tools and the instruments and equipment to survive in case something like a PLB fails. And so don't get me wrong, a personal locator beacon is not a replacement for survival skills, but it is one of the biggest game changers in survival as a whole. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.